Alright, hi guys and, and welcome. This is a really exciting interview for me. Uh, I've got uh, Stephen on the line who is uh, in character as Blippi on YouTube with a current subscriber of 1.9 million subscribers. Now that is more than some small countries, which is absolutely staggering. Um, Stephen has put up incredible videos. The last one was just four hours ago as of the time of this recording has already got more than 4,000 views in that four hours. The one before that was a week ago, one week ago, 633,000 views. The highest viewed video with Steven's channel is over 90 million views. And to prove that's not a fluke, the second highest at 63 million views. Steven, thank you so much for joining me. This is an absolute privilege to have you on. For sure. I'm, I'm happy to be here and I do like how you're standing up. Seems you're nice and healthy. Yeah, well, it's uh, the whole standing desk thing. When you win, when you work yeah. in the software industry, you've got to do as much movement as you can. So, mate, yeah. again, thank you so much for joining me. How did you get started? I mean, your character on Blippi, uh, on the YouTube, on the YouTube channel with Blippi, uh, is engaging with children's content. It's educational. It's full of life. How did you get started with this this whole YouTube uh, uh, journey that you've been on? Oh, I've lost you there, Stephen. I'll just uh, see if we can get you back again. All right, I might, uh, Stephen, if you can hear me, mate, I'll just hang up and I'll call right back and we'll see if we can get, oh hey, no, you're back. Hey, <laughs> you're back. You yeah, yeah, as soon as, uh, as soon as I said I'll call back, I think Skype had a heart attack and, and uh, okay. <laughs> they decided to keep going. So, yeah. mate, uh, so, I, didn't, I didn't hear the answer. How did you get started? Yeah, so anywho, uh, I'll try and wrap this up in a, you know, because it's a long journey and I guess with YouTube in general, it's always long journeys and so, um, and we'll talk about that and being consistent and, and regular with everything. Uh, will really make a difference. But I was living in LA for five, six years, right around there. I was filming commercials and promo videos for clients. I developed their websites. I did their SEO. I would embed those videos on their websites. I would take those videos, use them as pre-roll ads. So basically my expertise was online marketing and video creation for other people. I moved up to Washington State where I grew up. Um, I bought a rental property, you know, small town. So the rentals way cheaper than say buying a property in LA or something. So, sure. you know, I, I barely had enough money for the down payment. And, and my master plan was to live in, in Washington. And since I made enough connections in LA to travel back and forth one, two times uh, a month to continue to film commercials, make money down there, and then continue to grow my real estate landlord portfolio. Um, and while I was up there, since I knew the internet and all this stuff, my nephew was two years old at the time, and I saw him watching YouTube videos. Most of them were garbage, nothing like educational about them, but he really loved diggers, he really loved airplanes, uh, tractors, garbage trucks, animals, all types of outdoor stuff, and I just thought, well, maybe that'd be kind of fun creating a YouTube channel since I knew the internet and marketing and stuff for my nephew, but in incorporated learning and all, all of that. So anyways, wow. it's just a spark of seeing him watch content that I thought was garbage that I thought, well, maybe I could, you know, do something fun for him and turn it into a career. That's so fantastic. And actually your first video was on the farm with the, with the tractors and the machine. So I, I can see yeah. that you've, you've taken that inspiration. You've gone out, you've done the video and, and you know, that, that particular video is the one that I think has uh, over 600,000 views just on, on the very first video that you ever did up yeah. four years ago. So that's amazing. Yeah. That's really, really cool. And, um, uh, when you started, did you, did you have the idea that you would be growing a channel and a, and a following or, or was it just a, you know, the idea to see how it goes? Yeah, so my, my plan was to, I'm getting feedback, um, my plan was to create a brand that then I could turn it into a business and create a following and branding from the very beginning was was a big thing. Like say for example, I took into consideration the colors, my whole outfit, what you see is version two. My first outfit was, I you know did sketches and stuff and it actually kind of looked like a clown outfit like it had polka dots and uh, lightning bolts and stuff like that um, not not saying clowns aren't good but no, no, no. I just got it and I just thought okay I need to do better branding because I want to create a, a brand and a company um, and not just YouTube videos Fantastic. You know? 
So, I, think, thank you. Yeah. I think that's I think that's a massive lesson for people because obviously if, if people are watching yeah. this it's because they want to grow their own brand they want to they want to have that presence and it's not as easy as just turning on the camera uh, we've oh. done uh, you know this is probably our, our fifth or sixth interview in the vidfu series with um, uh, people from car backgrounds and all kinds of different areas and they always talk about the work that goes into it and you know the fact that it's not just as simple as turning on the camera and and, and showing up it's fascinating for me that you started with that intention of building that brand and of course the success has, has followed you and and would you say from people's um, if they're just getting started right now that they need to have that idea uh, or that that direction from the from the first video they do um, I, I don't think so one problem that I see with a lot of people is they always say like oh I need the best camera I need the the best content right out of the get-go I think when it comes to creating I think the best thing to do is just to create nice in, in, in not to say that anything has to be professional or great or anything like creating content is the hardest step you know creating that first video that's the hardest step way harder than creating the next 10 videos yeah for sure because uh, you're putting yourself out there and all that all of that stuff but I do think it is important having um, the, the goals, the dreams, the, the idea of what you want to create and to do the things in the beginning to set yourself in the future where you want to be. But I don't think you need to wait for it to be as good as what you want it to be to start doing. You just need to just do it. Like if you, you know, that video that you just mentioned, the very first two videos, I think, there wasn't a character in it. Like I wasn't in it. Blippi wasn't in it. Although the channel was called Blippi, but at that point I was still doing sketches. But I just knew, okay, the the sooner I start creating videos, the better. Although I had the intention and the the knowledge that I was going to create this character and this brand and all this stuff, but I just said I don't want to wait to get that perfect. So I just started creating and, you know, it was... Awesome. Yeah. That's, that's such an important lesson, I think, as well. Just, you know, just, just get out and put yourself out there. When, so now mm -hmm. as, we, as we look at your channel, and one of the things that you mentioned right after the introduction there was the consistency and making sure that it's, you know, always constant and all that kind of stuff. Now that I look at your channel, there's a, there's a video going up every single week. So it's a weekly upload. Do you storyboard? Yeah. Like, do you, do you plan the next episode? Uh, how do you go about putting those together? So, um, yeah, so it, it, that, that's kind of a... A whole there's many things that goes into it so we have a couple different channels we have blippy and that's the one that you're talking about with yep. the 1.8 million and then we have blippy toys which I think is at 1.7 million subscribers and so that's doing a video a week and then we have blippy espanol so like a lot of it is we're we're running and we're trying to catch up to what our our goals and our deadlines that we're putting on ourselves. okay uh, yeah, and so when it comes to storyboarding, uh, the animations get storyboarded, but when it comes to ideas, we have a long list of potential video ideas that we always have. Right now, we have maybe eight or so videos already shot, currently being edited, so okay. it's good to have them backlogged and all that. But a lot of it is, um, I've never written a script, not one Blippi video has ever had a script, ever. Beautiful. Um, but we've had... Um, an idea, like a flow. Uh, an idea, and like we need to get this shot, this shot, and this shot. But we've never been to the location. I don't know information about that animal or that machine or that thing. And so I wait till the day of. And um, yeah, so anywho, a lot Fantastic. of it's impromptu. Yeah. There's, there's two things I want to pick up on there. One is the list of, of ideas that you've got for the show. And the second is the editing and, and catching up with, with work as it goes through. So uh, can I start with the second one first? After yeah. you shot a video, so let's say we've gone to uh, one of the ones that my kids love is um, at an indoor playground. I think it's one of your most popular ones as well. Um, yeah. So after you've done the shot, so let's say you know, you've gone to the indoor playground, you've, you've taken the video. What, what's the time frame from that point in in terms of editing? You know, how much work then goes into it uh, to put that up onto line? Right. So I guess it depends on what type of video. If we're just talking about the play place one, which is a, a lot quicker edit than, say, um, one that uh, has a song and animation in it. So when the man hours comes into play, those with animations are a lot more. Sure. Or if it's just everything we shot in that one day, say like a play place, all the times that we have shot at a play place, we've shot 100% of the, the footage that same day. Some you shoot different days and all that. But when it comes to a quick edit, I would say four hours would be an extremely quick edit. Because right. like, even if it's just like a couple shots, 
Um, you still have to color correct, you have to do audio, you have to throw in graphics and all that. But average for a quick one would probably be eight hours. Um, a long one when it comes to total man hours because the animation studio, the editors, the shooting, or not even talk about the shooting, but you know the animation, the, the multiple versions of editing, the video itself, multiple versions of the animation, that would probably be uh, 40 to 60 hours, I'm guessing. Man hours. Um, and, and, and obviously yeah. you've got a team of people working with you now, Stephen. You've got uh, yeah. a crew that you work with. So how many people are typically in your crew? Right. So uh, it depends what exactly you're talking about. There's probably about 15 total people working on Blippi all across the world at any given time. Right. Um, all of those, most of them are freelancers. Yep. Uh, but that's also from voiceover people to people over um, overseas creating the merchandise. There's people here in America fulfilling the, the merchandise. There's a couple camera people that we work with. Um, those camera people are also the editors. We also have an editor now down in um, Costa Rica, which he's doing the Spanish Fantastic. voiceover. Um, and then here, Alyssa, she does a lot of the operations, production. She sets up a lot of the shoots. So um, 15 total people. Most of those are part-time, and I'd say um, less than five are completely full-time just on Libby. Perfect. And can I ask you, uh, that, that team, uh, knowing what I know from an entrepreneur's background and, and creating content online, etc., that wouldn't have been the case initially. It would have been just oh. you. It would have been you know somebody holding the camera, yeah. maybe. Um, how long did it take you to scale the team? So how long were you creating content when it was just you and then you kind of brought someone yeah. on board and then the next person, etc.? Yeah, so at the very, very beginning for the first year, it was... Uh, just me doing all the editing, the website stuff, every single thing except for when you see someone holding a camera. Right. A lot of the, the shots, even I put the camera on a tripod. Perfect. Uh, and so it was literally just me for the first year, year and a half, and I added a camera person that then every single shoe. Um, so then year and a half to two and a half, I, I uh, started doing T-shirts. There's a couple people doing t-shirts and so it, it definitely was very very gradual Fantastic. Um, throughout that whole time very unreal gradual. unreal and and that the the mention of the t-shirts there brings me back to that second question i was going to ask with the list of episodes and one of the things i wanted to ask about that now that you have the kind of influence you have as i said more subscribers than many small countries twice as many subscribers to your channel as live in fiji total twice as many um so now that you have that influence and you've got this list of episodes that you're planning to shoot. How often do you get people approaching you for sponsorship? So they might say, I want product placement of my particular item, we want to reach kids, etc." Does that happen on a regular basis for you? Yeah, so when it comes to paid stuff, we don't really accept tons because we you know, are, are trying to not do that because we don't want to sound or look like we're selling out or you know, we want to push or I want to push only the stuff that I believe in or I would have liked as a child. So we have done some paid ones um, that I believe fully aligns with the brand and all Perfect. of this stuff. Um, so yeah, we, we definitely get those, but that's definitely not the main source of income. But the only way that we do accept those is if it fully aligns with the brand and it doesn't seem like we're just trying to, to make pitch. money on, on the content, yeah. Absolutely. So. So, so in addition to, and this is something that everybody watching will want to know, um, in addition to, to the, the, I guess, what you call paid product placement, where people are you know, asking you to have a particular product in a show or sponsored by or something like that, what are the yeah. other ways, the other ways, in addition to you know, YouTube itself, the other ways that you're monetizing the channels that you have? Yeah, exactly. So, so the ma the main way that you know YouTube videos can create money, as you know, is just the the ad placement and then the sponsorship deals and stuff like that. But the other ways that we're expanding is through merchandise. I mean, especially that that is amazing for the kids to have something, so it brings enjoyment to them, which is awesome. Yeah. And you know, it's a whole other revenue stream, which you know is really nice that we can diversify that way and provide the kids and the parents of you know happy birthday presents and and just that's, that's very cool and, and to bring joy. Yeah. yeah. So merchandise is one, as as well as we're currently on Amazon. 
um, which is taking the current videos so they're not exclusive videos. They're the same videos, and then Amazon puts them on Amazon Prime. So that's obviously another way that you you can um, make more money off of videos, which the videos are your assets, we can say. And then from there, you can uh, distribute them on different platforms, Amazon, Netflix, which right now are just on Amazon, Netflix, we're on Kadoodle, um, uh, Roku, we're on Roku as well. So basically taking the same stuff and putting it in many places because back in the day, uh, content was just limited to television and broadcasts and cable, but now it's, you know, there's tons of SVOD apps out there, which are paid subscription apps. There's yeah. tons of platforms. There's tons of uh, free times. websites that have ad revenue. So that's definitely another uh, place that you can make money on content for all those people making content. That's uh, awesome. That's yeah. that's really good to know. I was talking in one of our previous interviews. We were amazed when we look at, um, um, I'm trying to remember the name of it, but uh, there was a website that, that looks at your influence, etc. And uh, we said, you know, one of his episodes reached more people than CNN. And we're like, wow. you know, yeah, just yeah. being able to have that kind of influence and now talking about that monetization from being able to move that content into multiple platforms, reaching yeah. more people and of course, you know, getting rewarded for that. Stephen, you've been incredibly right. generous with your time um, yeah. and I'm, I'm so, so, so grateful for it. I've just got a couple of other questions there uh, that I wanted to fire off to you. Um, so what's the best and worst things about running a video based uh, business that you have right now? Uh, best thing that I would say is being able to have schedules to do whatever you want, whenever you want, um, for everyone involved. Like that's one thing that I really strive for. Anyone that's involved with Blippi, like I don't want to say be at work at this time or do this then. I mean, yes, there's deadlines, but you know, there's not one person that has to be at work at this time. You awesome. know, having those creative juices flowing is is super super cool having your own business being able to support people also giving these children content that i would have loved to have to have when i was a child like that's definitely the most rewarding thing um so some of the downfalls though are uh when youtube is your main platform um and i guess this will lead into another one when youtube's your main platform you're at the mercy of their algorithms right and same kind of thing when you don't own the platform then from there you're at the mercy of what they want they desire um it's kind of scary because what happens if you know Channels their are, yep. fee structure or your channel or you know like there's just many potential things that when you're not in control of the the content because yeah you own the content but at the same time you aren't in control of viewership you're not yeah. in control of anything so you just you're at the mercy of someone else so like although i don't have a boss i kind of do yeah right <laughs> okay and they, they have a big red <laughs> yeah. uh, red logo yeah. um so uh one of the things and I, I did have one more question but i'm going to slot in an extra one they're talking about uh, having youtube as the primary channel one of the uh, primary uh, platform one of the things that um everybody wants to know is how do you deal with comments on the post themselves, do you are you answering personally? Do you have a team, and how do you handle the negative ones, and you know all that kind of stuff? Yeah, yeah. So I used to handle everything myself, but um, over I don't know how long ago it was. I don't know six months ago or so. I I don't. I do still look at the con comments and all that. I still have access to the social media and all that, so it's still fun to to see it. But you know there are so much coming in that um, on on social media. Alyssa does everything um, now, and so I just kind of supplement it, of look, and you know, get the enjoyment of reading the comments. But uh, when it comes to the the bad ones, I think she just deletes them or hides them or something of just you know where it's like there's always gonna be trolls or people that are angry or or jealous or you know whatever it is. It's yeah. just you know I'm I'm sure all it, you know. Here's an interesting thing. When I started Blippi, you know, everyone was like, why are you doing a kid show? You know, like you could be doing music videos. You could be doing anything you want with film because t typically like children's content's not the coolest thing to create. But now it's, you know, it's super nice that I have the support. And so when it comes to the negative stuff, you know, the, the, the positives outweigh it 
a thousand to two thousand to one. I see. I see some of the comments. Just we love you, Blippi, and uh, I mean that yeah. just must be just yeah. fantastic, man. Yeah. So that's yeah. awesome. Yeah. And, and and again, Stephen, I'm so grateful for your time. I know you've got to shoot yeah. off. Um, um, we talk about we talk about merchandise. We talk about you know the different platforms. We talk about the reach. Uh, and I think people would would uh, you know the natural human reaction would be like, well, that's okay for you. You've already got two million subscribers, kind of thing. Um, so my question, my last question would be, if if we took that away, if if we took the the brand that you've built up away and we said today's a brand new day you have to create a new brand and a new channel and you know following what you know already what would you do what would you um what would how would you get started and how would you propel forward knowing what you know right so uh, like i said at the very beginning i think the most important thing is consistency mm -hmm. apart from good quality content because all you youtube the algorithms are doing is what video is better okay this one okay let's give this one more views than than this one so having a passion for what what you're creating doesn't matter what industry of content that that you're in if you have a passion for it then from there like that's gonna that's gonna naturally make people like to watch that content more Absolutely. and you're doing it for the right reason because you love it and you're not doing it for another reason of making money or getting famous or you know whatever it is so basically don't do it for the wrong reason have have passion cool. to do it and if not and you know like from the very beginning i i had passion you know i wanted to create something for my nephew and i just thought it, it would be fun for me and like you know no one really gets into kid kids content when five years ago and thinking like oh yeah this is gonna be cool i'm excited to be a famous children's entertainer you know right. no one no one has ever said that um but anyway so having passion um, starting it for the right reasons and having good quality content is is one aspect of it. And good quality content doesn't necessarily mean that you have to have the best camera or or the the best editing. You don't need special effects. And, and I'm just generalizing everything because all content is different. Sure. Um, you know, there's people with just cell phones that are you know just killing it and Back they're high, yeah. doing what they love and it's crazy. So, anyways, that creative aspect of it let's say needs to be on point then the the branding aspect of it the professionals aspect of it the professional side of it needs to be on point as well and that think about i mean create stuff and because as you create stuff you're going to learn more and more about what needs to be changed and what needs to be done but think about the business side of it as well starting out so Perfect. um you know the branding the colors the fonts the the, the sounds, the music, that everything, the intros, the outros, you know, whatever that you feel is necessary. Think about it from from the beginning of it, how consistent you want the content. If you think one, one time a week, don't fall to once every month. You know, like if you're going to be doing it X amount of times per week or X amount of times per month, never go below that because YouTube, I believe, you know, no one really knows, but yeah, sure. I believe – that's not a good thing. You can ramp it up, but don't ramp it down. So just think about the business side of it. And, you know, that's one thing, everything from the name, like I said, the colors, the outfit, everything. I, I like to try and think about stuff as before I, I do stuff, but don't think about, don't hold off on creating just because you haven't figured this out. You right. know, still create while you think about So all get it out there just, and move yeah. as you go, yeah, absolutely. But yeah. start with Hope. start with passion and start with professionalism, start with branding, but start. Like get started yeah, and totally. you know fill in the blanks yeah. as you go. Yeah, and be consistent. Like if you look at like all my camera knowledge, let's say, you know, I went to UCLA extension for cinematography, I had all the knowledge that I have right now in cameras and lighting and you know, whatever from the beginning of Blippi. But if you watch a beginning Blippi video, it's day and night of like the content. Although yeah. I have the same exact knowledge, I have learned so much of what I believe my viewers want, what I believe that will, will be the best potential content, like the highest quality content that I'm not just, you know, slapping something together Absolutely. to where like, you know, it's day and night of the content. And yeah. the only way that I got to, the content right now is just learning as I created. And it's been, you know, a long four and a half years of 
thinking about the brand Absolutely. day in and day out. Yeah, yeah the, so rewards, the rewards are seriously clear, man. And again, uh, guys, I just want to say thank you to Stephen from the, from the Blippi Chani and to Alyssa, of course, uh, whose fingers I can hear typing in the background, making sure everything's staying in, in line. Um, she's over the people behind the scenes. Um, guys, if you're watching this, make sure you go and check out Stephen's channel. It's Blippi on YouTube. I'll put a link below this video. Even if you don't have kids, look at the professionalism, look at the consistency, look at the branding, look at the work ethic, and look at the ways that you can take your message out to a massive audience. Stephen, thank you so much for your time. I absolutely love it. My, as I said, my kids love the channel as well. I'm so thrilled to hear of you know um, the, the joy that I can literally see on your face when you talk about the t-shirts, getting a happy birthday present into the kids' hands, and they you know they love Blippi and they can wear that to, to daycare or whatever, and uh, there's yeah. a, a real joy that you can't put a price on with that as well. Um, mate, congratulations on the incredible success of the channels that you run all across the board. And uh, all I can wish for you is a, is a steady growth and much joy and happiness in the future, man. Thank you again for joining me. Cool. Yeah, thank you very much. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Cheers. Thanks very much. See, see you later.